Shindobre team, and welcome to the channel. Now, what we're going to do on this video today is build on our last recording that we made at my club water. You remember, we did the retro waggler fishing. For those that didn't watch that, it will be somewhere in the top of your screen if you fancy what, what giving that a watch. But I said on that video, um, when it warms up a wee bit, um, you know, I probably wouldn't have to rely on the waggler as much because I can bring those fish, those roach and road bits and pieces, um, a little bit closer in and catch on the whip. Well, we're a few weeks after that video and it has warmed up slightly, but honestly, this weather, it's been a horrific spring, it really has. So don't be fooled by any sun that comes out today. Although it feels nice when it's out, we're on a north northwesterly wind. It's 13 degrees right now, half nine in the morning. And it's been raining all night, really cold rain from the north as well. So taking a bit of a gamble saying I'll catch these fish on the whip. Um, it's really windy as well, so it's not ideal conditions to fish a whip to be fair, but I've got to do it anyway, so I haven't got a lot of time um, to sort of get out on the bank at the minute. So that's what we need to do. Let's get on the bank, let's get to that big lake that we was on last time. And we'll look at a couple of different whip setups. I've got a couple of, a couple of different ones today. Um, and look at it in a little bit more complexity rather than a simplistic way. So let's get up to the lake. It's that big lake that we fished last time. Try and get the wind off of our backs uh, and we'll go through some whip fishing tactics. It can be as simple or it can be as complicated as you want it to be really. So um, today we're going to go on the middle ground. Keep it simple but you know with a little bit of uh, a bit of thought process. Right old team, here we are, back at the lake. You can see there's still a, a bit of a drop on. Uh, the lake's still well up. Now the wind's sort of ripping this direction. Um, in theory I should fish along that far bank with the wind to my back but it's a long way from where the flood water ends and the start of the lake begins and I don't really want to be uh, messing about today I've only got a couple of hours and I want to be comfortable so my thinking is if I go in that far corner so around peg five here it's generally a consistent area I'll have a bit of wind in my face but I think that this island will cut out some of that as well um, We'll see, we'll have to give it a go. Last time we did the waggler, we were somewhere near this um, this boy here. And as it happens, on the first match that we had at weekend, I drew there as well. We fished that waggler sort of three quarters of the way across and had a number of fish on the whip that day as well, which was making me thinking, let's give it a go this week. So I'm gonna go uh, find the peg, get set up, and now uh, we can talk through some tactics. Right, we're all set up. Uh, may have made a mistake. <laughs> the wind is right in my face. The island isn't giving me as much protection as I've hoped, but I, I thought down this corner would have been better, but no. Anyway, at least we're not having to wade out too far. Just had to pin my net down though, because it kept blowing in with the wind. Um, sticking with the retro theme, got myself a, a new old box, shall we say, never been used before actually, when I was a youngster. It's of a watercraft box, if anybody remembers those. Um, and I was after something a little bit more, with a few more draws for when I fish the rivers in the winter and I, and I do a bit of wandering. So I've replaced my old little Silstar box with this Octoplus Strong Box. Never been used off of eBay. Been sat in someone's garage for about 20 years. So yeah, I'm well happy with that. Six draws, exactly as I remember watercraft. Anyway, I've not had to go too far out into the water uh, this time on the bait tray so you remember on the last video we had some maggots and we fished with the maggot and hemp but corn skin was a real sort of uh, differentiator to, to sort of single out those bigger fish um, i've got some worms in there as well a worm's head can be really good fish in the whip i'll explain that in a little bit and ground bait wise so i'll talk you through the whip setup in a second but i want to fish some ground bait a little bit further in the deeper water to hand and that's a mix of uh, Miracle F1 Supreme, the original colour, 
which is a blend of three different pellets um, and also some van der Nijn PV1 collant which means that when I squeeze the, the collant makes that nice and hard and just a you know that will sink straight down to the bottom uh, collant is a, is a binder so I'll talk you through that in a second anyway the whips though so there's two different types of whips that you can get there's a the, your bog standard what you'd say telescopic whips they go from three to sort of five meters i wouldn't go beyond that they become unfishable and they can be as cheap or as expensive as you like i've got a couple of leader gt concept whips three and four meters and i use them on the match on sunday and they're perfect but you can also upgrade as well if you want to spend a little bit more for about those leader ones are at 10 15 pound you can get the guru a class ones as well they're nice and uh, affordable if you want to spend a little bit more uh, this is a adrenaline acolyte three meters about 50 pound but then beyond the telescopic whips you've got what's called a system whip which are essentially like little poles so this one is is quite a high-end one this is a dior air it's, it's eight meters but you can see these little sections go together just like they would on a on a standard pole and with this system whip you get three top kits one flick tip which is similar to the to the telescopic ones but also little sections that you can elasticate and that's what we're doing today um, i'm going to fish this is a uh, eight to ten uh, midi high vis uh, there's even a little puller kit on there as well in case i hook anything decent but very difficult to use that because i'll be fishing four or five meters to hand so i wouldn't be able to get to that puller kit um, and to carry whips i use one of these little drenin kit tubes really handy no need for big hole holes in there i can fit in um so you can see another top kit there uh, my rigs i'll put you through them in a second um, a landing net handle and, and to go whip fishing you're good to go you don't need that much tackle as i say it can be as cheap or as it can be as expensive as you wish it to be um, today we're doing a middle ground three meter whip uh, to hand with a, with a flick tip telescopic one and also the system whip a little bit further out in the deeper water to try and demonstrate that as well rig wise so i'm a big fan when it's windy of using bottom end only floats so essentially wagglers um you'll see uh, i'll do a close-up of these but on the uh drennan three meter to hand there's a little drake uh i'll show you actually a little drake peacock float there just a little five inch one a couple of locking shot and some small number 10 droppers really really nice rig is that uh, and i'll show you why i use bottom end in a second on the deeper rig i like to use these uh let's find it these dave harrell floats so these are dh19s they're great on the river uh for fishing sort of hemp but also brilliant fishing in deeper water to hand with the whip. I'll, I'll do some closer up shots of them. So I'm gonna plumb up now, and then next time we chat, I'll be fishing. Right, we're gonna kick off. And I've got this uh, system whip set up at six meters. And one of the things to do when you are setting up your whip, you, you're fishing to hand if you like, is you don't have your hook right to the end of the whip you need to allow for either the elastic to pull out for a, a, a few inches a few feet even or the bend of the flick tip so my rig's probably sort of 12 inches short of the end of the pole this wind is a bugger so casting out um would normally be a bit of an underarm flick but because of this and typically now talk about april showers here comes the rain. Um, I'm going to have to do almost like a, as if I would cast with a, a flick tip, uh, uh, with a stick float. So to the side. Now, conscious that my ground bait might get very wet here as well. So what we're talking about to cast out is almost a, a as if you were casting out a, a stick float. Be careful not to walk your hand, but you're going to go that way and utilize the bulk weight so what we've got is we've got a bulk of number eight this is a three quarters of a gram float fishing in about eight foot of water there's a bite straight away it's a good start a little rud brilliant i kicked off with three balls of of the ground bait mix 
that's it. I'm just going to put me, cover my maggots up. Those will be crawling off. So three balls of ground bait. Sunk straight to the bottom. I'm fishing on that slope. If you remember from the last video, another bite. Perfect. You see, that elastic is just to cushion the strike. It's not going to pull out very far. It's an eight to ten. Um, and what you can do is you can follow up three balls of ground bait at the start, and I can follow up with little sort of marble sized balls like that. So I'm fishing on a slope and about eight foot. Now, I'm trying to bomb the bait down. I've got a bulk, bulk about 18 inches from the hook of number eights, then three number 10 droppers. Just a single maggot to kick off with. This weather is horrific. Talk about April showers. But of course, I want to be getting the bigger rod and um, those roach that we spoke about last time. It's not a very good cast. It is going to be difficult in this, in this wind. It has dropped a little bit now, so. There we go, perfect. So you're casting it like as if you're casting a stick float from the side. Now I'm not going to lose feed any. I'm tempted to start throwing maggots and emping, but I want to fish over that ground bait. So we keep the line tight. I've got two number four back shot. And that is to keep that line nice and tight. Now that will be sort of just settling now down the bottom. There we go. Another little, a rud. I'll keep the same maggot on. We can get away with that. There we go, right. Perfect. So we're casting the, the bulk of the rig. Keep the line tight. So you can have the, the whip between your legs as if you was fishing a pole on a windy day. Keep the line tight, high if you need to, or to the side. So I'm not fishing the length of the pole. That's a good bite. Feels a bit better. I'm not fishing the full length of the pole into the open water. I'm sort of casting it out and then dragging it slightly back up the shelf. Try and show you. So it, the bulk goes out. There you go. So it's sort of just under the end of the, of the whip. But the bait will be going down the shelf. What I'm looking for as well is any fish holding the bait up as they're intercepting it mid-water. That's now on the bottom and there's a bite. You can see how fast you can build up a weight of fish. They've come straight to that ground bait. And I imagine as soon as I start loose feeding any emp and maggot, we can bring them onto that three meter line where it will be even quicker. But I don't wanna, don't wanna do that just yet. I wanna demonstrate this. Perfect. There's another little nugget of ground bait though. A bit close that one. A little bit further out. There we go. There's no way we're going to be that accurate in this, this wind. Let's talk about lines, etc. Um, for quite you want quite robust line on your whip rig because it's going for a lot of punishment, a lot of casting. So 0.20 lines, about seven and a half pound. Down to a 0.12 hook length, which is about three pound, a size 16. Drennan silverfish. Uh, that is a better fish. Drennan silverfish hook. So that was on a little piece of corn. It's definitely a, a slightly better stamp rod. Remember, as of the last video, we're looking for those better stamp roach that have gone into the lake. But a small piece of corn. That was a bad cast. There we go. Right, there we are. Yeah, I can just keep these little 
thimble fulls the ground bait going in. Hold the line tight. Those four num those two number four back shot. Keep it relatively, relatively tight. There we go. That's corn definitely singling out the better fish. See what I mean about that? The elastic is coming out sort of several inches, which means it comes right to my hand. If I would have tied my rig exactly the length of the of the whip, then I'd have had to be holding the, the whip in the air. It's not very, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not fishing very tidy with this wind, but it's getting to where I need it to be. That's the most important thing. And the bait is getting to the bottom. On that slope. You see how I'm holding the, holding the whip in the air, keeping that line tight. And that might be just holding up a little bit. Imagine a few fish trying to intercept that on the way down. Look for a positive bite. Got a bit of bristle showing because of these, this ripple. Right, Tina, so at this stage of the video, when things all go a little bit pee tongue, everything was going swimmingly. You can see that we've got two types of whip set up. We've gone the telescopic route, a three meter one with a flick tip, uh, and that's for later on in the session. Um, as it stands right now, we're fishing in that deeper water um, because that's where the fish are. It's cloudy, it's cold, loads of cold rain gone in. Um, the fish are not gonna be on that three meter line. So we're catching in that deeper water, eight foot sort of area, um, feeding little nuggets of crumb. The problem what happens now is if you see in the distance, there's some serious black cow clouds rolling in. Now, what happened at this stage of the session is it absolutely belted it down for about 10 minutes. All my gear got completely soaked, which meant that the microphone was really, really iffy on the camera. Camera's waterproof, luckily enough. So unfortunately, we lose sound pretty much completely, apart from some intermittent pieces throughout the rest of the session. What I do is I then begin feeding the short line by hand as far as I could, given the wind in my face, hemp and maggots, um, and eventually we do start getting some fish on the short line. So this next clip is all about, what I'd call a worm head challenge. So I go to fish, uh, the idea is I've got some worms on the side tray, just pinch the worm's head off and try and catch as many fish as I can using one little worm head. So let's take a little look at what happens next.
So there we go, nine fish. I actually think it was 10 looking back through the footage, um, but nine fish on the same worm head. And when I was showing you the bait tray at the start of the session, that's uh, why I pointed out the worms because of how important they can be. Some alternatives though, when you are fishing at speed, anything that saves those vital seconds, uh, i.e. changing bait, things like um, perhaps dead maggots, um, perhaps fake baits, fake maggots and casters, if the fishery allows it. Anything that enables you to keep into a rhythm. This day wasn't a particularly bagging day as such. It was still like, a little bit too chilly, so we weren't fish after fish after fish. But by having that worm's head on, it did make me a little bit more efficient. Now, the next section, there's a little bit of sound on this, but what this, uh, why this bit's important was to demonstrate the versatility of the system whip. What I decided to do was add the additional two sections I had behind my box, which took the whip out to eight meters. I then shortened the line between the float and the whip tip, essentially not quite short lining as if I was fishing a long pole, but, but very, very similar. What it meant is I could then replumb up and fish on a bit further down the shelf to around 11 to 12 foot deep. Um, I actually put a little cad pot on as well and I fed just corn and hemp. Nice heavy baits that should make it down to the bottom just to see um, if those larger roach were lurking a little bit further out. And it also demonstrates all you need to do with the, with the system whip was take two sections off and then swing to hand. So again, it's just as quick. Let's have a little look. So just to show you the versatility of these system whips, you might notice at the end of the whips a little cad pot. What I've done is I've put two extra sections of the whip on, shortened the line between the float and the whip tip, and replumbed up beyond the next shelf. So I'm now in about 11 foot of water. So essentially I've got short line fishing like I would with a pole, but because it's so deep, I only have to whip on two sections and I'm fishing to hand again. And it's a lot lighter than fishing, you know, a, a pole in some instances as well. So I've just put in some corn and some hemp on the spot beyond that shelf. A little bite there. Ooh, missed that. Got a bite there. Take off two sections like I am doing now and I'm fishing to hand again. about 11 foot of water, bigger baits, deeper water, better fish. Almost like a, a lift bar. We've got, we've got a better ropes. I can try and swing this and be, <laughs> be very brave. Lovely stuff. him in the net. We're now coming to the end of the session. If we break it down into three sort of pieces really, we began the session on the longer whip, the system whip, six meters. Um, we were fishing down the slope, eight foot of water-ish. Those smaller fish weren't comfortable on the close line just, just yet. That's why we started long. Three bowls of ground bait, little nuggets over the top. Couldn't lose feed, even with the catapult, wouldn't have got it out there very well. So we catch a few, the wind dies a little bit, we start feeding loose as much as, as accurate as we can um, on the three meter line. The storm comes, it ruins all the, uh, <laughs> the sound, if you like, the equipment. But then eventually, sun comes up, wind drops a little bit, we feed a bit more short, we go onto that short whip, we catch some fish, we do the worm head challenge. We then demonstrate the versatility of the system whip by adding these extra sections that you've just watched now, just then. The final section is we come back short again onto the short whip. Um, the sun's out, um, the fish are coming up in the water. It's a good opportunity to, to get motoring once again. So that's what this section is about. There's a little bit of sound, not a great deal, um, but you, you get the gist here. We actually sort of have them lined up a lot better towards the end of the session.
lovely roach, about two and a half foot deep, in about five foot of water. And just like last time on the water video, Apologies for the microphone issues. I'm pretty much shouting in this wind. <laughs> Hoping you can hear. This has not been ideal conditions to fish a whip at all. I've not had the rigs that I should have had. But for a short session, hopefully we demonstrated the versatility between telescopic whips to hand like we're doing now. Now then what's this? This feels a bit better. And that system whip. method combining the two types the telescopic and the system wind So I'm pretty sure now as I put the fish back, uh, there's no sound here to, to listen to at all. But hopefully, um, despite the technological challenges that we've had, you've picked up on the fact that it's a really, really useful tool to have in your armory is whip fishing. It can be really, really simple. A little kid stick a, a, a ready-made rig and fish away and um, jobs are good. And, or you can be a little bit more, think about it a bit more in depth of what you're doing like I did on this session today. But cheers for watching, and uh, next time we'll make sure we have less technological issues.